This year's Nobel Prize was won by two chemists, Benjamin List from Germany and David Macmillan, originally from Scotland, but whose scientific career has been in America. And it is based on a field called organocatalysis using organic molecules as a catalysts and using them very specifically for making molecules of one hand rather than the other. Because organic molecules have a carbon atom that is surrounded by four groups, if those four groups are all different, they can be arranged in two ways which are mirror images of each other. You can see the mirror images in these two dog toys here that look really similar, but you can't arrange them in the same position. So you have two molecules which are chemically identical, but have different arrangement of atoms in space. And the difficulty for chemists is to make one of them rather than the other. So why should you want to make one rather than the other? And the answer is that the different handed molecules can have different properties. At the Nobel announcement, the person explaining what the prize was for pointed out that a lemon and an orange have the same chemicals in them called limonene, but different handedness. So the limonene in the lemon makes it smell of lemon and in the orange makes it smell of oranges. In nature, inside my body, inside your body, we have enzymes, which are really quite complicated molecules that can make molecules of one hand rather than the other. They act as catalysts. They bring together the reactants so that they react to make the handed molecule you want. This type of catalysis uses very, very simple molecules that you can take from biology, take from nature, to inspire and to drive chemical processes. So unlike other natural materials, things like enzymes, these molecules are really small, small molecules with masses of about 100 to 150 mass units, sometimes a little bit larger, but not much larger, not like a protein, which is thousands of atomic mass units. So the benefits are that energy consumption is reduced, that atom efficiency is increased and that we don't make lots and lots of wastes and, and waste lots of atoms, which other types of catalysis can actually do. Now, the breakthrough that these two chemists made was to realise that you can select molecules which you find in the enzymes that catalyse a particular reaction. In the case of Benjamin List, it was a sort of reaction called the aldol reaction, where you bring two aldehydes together, and there's an enzyme that catalyzes this reaction, and just a bit of that enzyme is a molecule called proline. And what Benjamin List showed was that using proline by itself, you could also get a catalytic reaction and produce one molecule rather than the other. This was a huge breakthrough. The proline didn't react terribly well. It wasn't a very good catalyst, but it demonstrated the principle. So this is proline. It's one of the molecules that's been used by um, List and Macmillan, or one of the types of molecules. And it's an amino acid, so it's a building block of protein. One of the glories of that is it's readily available. Um, it comes as, as a single enantiomer, so one-handed form and it's non-toxic. So we eat about five or six grams apparently uh, a day and our bodies can produce it as well. Proline is only one of the molecules that's been used as, as an organocatalyst. It was certainly one of the first molecules that was used, but it really represents a whole class and sort of the, the original um, compound which then people have developed and, and built on. So this is a very obvious one to go to because it is in proteins and it's, it's something that we can all relate to in, in that sense. You know, it's chemists using and simplifying nature's highly sophisticated machinery to, to their own ends. At a Nobel Prize ceremony, they try and get one of the prize winners online so they can answer questions. And Benjamin List said that when he thought of the idea, he first of all thought somebody must have tried it before 
but he couldn't find any record. So he tried it and when he worked, he realised it was probably something pretty important. David Macmillan used a different reaction, so-called Diels alder reaction, which involves bringing two organic molecules together. And he also found a catalyst quite independently, which would do this so you get one hand rather than the other. In chemical terms, this is called enantioselectivity. And once these discoveries had been made, and they were made about 20 years ago, then people realised it was possible and lots of people started researching. They have now found better and better catalysts and some of those catalysts are now much better than naturally occurring enzymes and you can do the reactions much faster and get things which you cannot get with enzymes. Other people have worked on this kind of thing before, but Liston and Macmillan have certainly really pushed the field forward and opened it up for others to come in and, and develop it and have you know, opened it up to a whole new generation of researchers. Actually, when I heard the prize, my mind fleeted back through my career to, to friends and, and really important friends, people like Carlos Barbas, who, who worked with Ben in some of the earlier days. And the contributions of these people who are sadly no longer with us and the contributions of the future will really drive the impact of not only organocatalysis but other types of sustainable chemistry. Some people say that winning the Nobel Prize is the biggest disaster that can happen to a scientist. Of course, it's wonderful glory that you've won the prize and a huge honour. On the other hand, as soon as you win the Nobel Prize, everybody wants you to give lectures. You become a public figure and a lot of people, a lot of Nobel Prize winners, don't have any time really to do more science. They're spending all their time being a public figure. So, if you want to be a really successful and productive scientist, it might be better not to win a Nobel Prize. Here at Berkeley, they have parking spaces reserved just for Nobel laureates. So how do you prove you're a Nobel laureate? Do you have to, do you have to put your medal on the dashboard? This is what you get when you win the Nobel Prize. It's a real Nobel Prize medal made of gold. I think Brady was hoping that I'd be mugged on the way so that he could have a good story. Scientist loses Nobel Prize. Yeah, I mean, 